Hi everybody, I'm Debbie and welcome to our engineering talk. We have Paul with us today from Accenture and he's going to be delivering the lesson of the importance of pitches and introduction to artificial intelligence. So over to you Paul. Fab. Hello everyone. Um, so as Debbie said, my name is Paul McMurray. Uh, I work for a company called Accenture <clears throat> and um, we get involved, you might not have heard of us, but we get involved in kind of more than what you realise we do. We, you know, most of your, more than a quarter of your mobile phone bills will have probably been engineered by us in one way or another. We get involved with many parts of, um, the under the bonnet parts of the world and how it operates in a, in a digital capacity. Um, but I'm here today to talk to you about um, something that is simple, exciting and quite powerful. Um, but one of the things I really want this to be about, and hopefully you can see my screen, is um, artificial intelligence, machine learning and STEM and all those various words that we'll have heard of in the past. Um, the really services that we can hook into and um, make use of and we can make funky tools we can make things um, you know really let us start seeing the power of technology these days um, so like I said today this is a talk about artificial intelligence and the power of pictures um, so there's a chap who um, from a long time ago made a statement of um, technology and how sometimes it can wow you so much that you can't tell the difference between that and magic um, and what I want to do today is to just give you a little taster of technology and magic because it and then really take away some of that um, I'm not clever enough or I can't do that the the truth of the matter is every single one of you can um, I know every one of your teachers will want you to be involved in some kind of coding with some sort of language. And really want, what I want to do is to um, really get you to have a think about um, what's actually available and what we can see in the world around us. So why do we use pictures? Um, well, we use them for a boatload of different reasons. You know, we want to remind ourselves that we're having a good time. Um, you might go on holiday and you want people to see that you've been there. They might have, you might have watched something on the TV. There's, for example, been a car crash and the police force um, or the emergency services want to take photographs of evidence of what's going on in the area. You might have notions of if you're if you everyone watched the football. Um, there's the notion of um, you know someone complained about a laser point and where did it come from? Well, that's all the power of images. Um, and one thing to note on images, you know, if, if you watch a video recording, it's just made up of many different images. So if you think amongst yourselves, why else do we take pictures? I take them for a reason, but they're so powerful. It's got so much information in it. Um, for example, um, a few weeks ago, me and my partner were walking down the street and there was a company that were building some scaffolding and she tripped over something that was on the floor. And what I did straight away is I turned around and I took a photograph of the van and um, one of the girls said, well, what are you doing that for? And I said, well, look, I, I've got the telephone number, I've got the company name, I've got the badge, I've got the registration. I was like, there's so much information that I've got there. And it's that instant flash of what can I take from those pictures? So. I've got, I've got a little task here and, the, and it is too. Um, we're going to look at a picture and we're going to. I want you to just think in your mind about what you can see in each picture. Think about is there something missing from the picture? Is there something that I can see that my the person sitting next to me can't? I want you to think about, you know, the category of the picture. Is it is it a person? Is it a sport? Is it a place? Is there something happening? And every picture tells a story. Um, it might be a really boring story. It might be, uh, you know, it might be a very elaborate story, but every picture can tell a story. So, I want to take a second and look at this picture and uh, look and what do, what do we see? Um, I mean, we do see a huge mess. We see um, lots of different things on the desk. It kind of looks like electronics 
it kind of looks like is it a repair station um I, I you know we can take an awful lot from that picture but what do you see write some things down that you see what do you think's going on because it's quite busy it's a it's a very busy picture and what i'm going to do is i've got three i'm going to whiz through them then i'm going to come back to this one and show you something so this is another picture what do you see what's going on um what can you pick out from that does it tell a story um do you see any faces or things that give you an indicator as to what's actually happening in that picture and then some of you might be a fan some of you might not be but here's two guys from um, star wars that um, i'm a fan of two characters you might be able to name them you might not you might have an idea of what sort of character they are um, well one of the things that i've given your teachers is a little prototype that i am just going to try and bring up on my screen now your teacher has um, the code that i've written um, they'll have they'll be able to give you access or give you a demo um, but what i want can you can you see my phone everyone just waving it in front of the camera Hopefully you yeah, can see can that. See, I can see that. Yeah. Great. I'm going to go back to picture one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click choose file. And I am going to take a photo. Of that screen, so you can see that I've took a photo. And I'm going to use this photo and you can see that I've got a picture of the photo that I've selected. And in just a second. It's having a little think in the background. What it's actually telling me is it's picked out audio equipment. It's picked out urban design. It's picked out automotive design. Electronic instrument, electronic device, engineering, eyewear. I mean, I can't see eyewear in there anywhere and and uh, space. So it's it's picked up that's an electronics environment uh, and various pieces of information. Now, none of this is driven by something that I've written to pick out what's in there. This is actually driven by artificial intelligence that's been learning over years. And I mean years because I'm kind of going back to the 70s, 80s, maybe even earlier when this sort of technology came about. Now the second picture I'm going to take of that. Uh, and we'll go so you can see that I've took a picture. And I'm going to click on use photo. So you can see that I've um, took a photograph. And it's having a little bit of a think. Now, what do you guys see in this picture? Well. It doesn't look like they're line dancing or playing tennis, that's for sure. Um, I've never seen someone doing this in a game of football. So my mind is looking at this picture and what I'm seeing is it's rugby it looks like a scrum but one of the things i don't see and um, there might be a little bit of a suggestion at the bottom of this picture of that maybe looks like a football but what has this artificial intelligence picked well i don't know if you can see that i'm just going to wave it around what it actually says is rugby shorts sports uniform sports sports equipment sports gear clear cleat yellow thigh and ball game and that's just in what five seconds or 10 seconds and you know if we look at this we've used our own minds and our knowledge of rugby if you if you're if you're into rugby but there is no football so it's derived information it's telling us a little bit of a story that we can um we don't have all of the information in front of us because there's a little bit missing but it's actually been intelligent enough to take into account everything that I've took that's inside of that picture and it's drawing objects from that picture using artificial intelligence. So we're going to go on to um, these now. And the reason I've got these two here is I want to give the notion that artificial intelligence is it's not perfect. It has to learn over time. So when you go into your classroom, you go in with um, 
you go in with a model of what you know. You go into maths, you might be learning a new topic. And what your teacher does is he gives you information. Um, they'll talk about what is the purpose of the outcome of what you what are your learning objectives when you leave that classroom your model of you as a human being retrains but your real intelligence gets better over time and the way i'm going to demonstrate that is i am going to use the same tool and i'm going to take a photograph of this big hairy guy's face anyone know what this guy's name is Let's have someone shout it out. Someone must know on the call. I actually don't. I've never seen the movie. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, Jill says Chewy. It is. And what this is actually correctly picked out is, I don't know if you can see any of that, Chewbacca, Carnivore, Art, Painting, Terrestrial Animal, Fur, which is great. It's actually picked out. So at some point in its past, it's learnt through a number of different ways that you know it'll have been fed information about the, the categories of this thing about the distance between the eyes the the fur and maybe other information about other pictures about this guy but then we've got this guy on the right who's from the same film um does anyone know what this guy's called sorry ah well his name's his name's c3po so I'm going to take oh, a photo. Oh, Jill knew that one as well. <laughs> ah, good work. So I've took a photograph and it's having a bit of a thing. There's the photograph. Doesn't matter if it's kind of out of focus or whatever, but you can see that I've took it. And he's having a little bit of a think. And what he's come out with is sculpture, art, metal, bronze, fashion accessory. I think he thinks he's maybe a pendant. Artifact, bronze sculpture and antique. It's not picked out that it's C3PO, but that's great because it means that, you know, it's it's intelligence. It has to learn over time. And by me feeding these pictures, it may well learn over time about what actually is it. Um, so th for me, that that, that is a, a, a real world example of taking a picture. And what this is doing is it's it's just deriving objects for that art, that it can see inside of that picture and it's making it's deriving all of those models and information that it's that it's learned from over the years and it's giving us a list without us having to sit there and think about it and draw lists it's giving us information that is going to help us decide or make it you know we're going to make a decision on do we need to um take the picture again is there something in the picture that shouldn't be there and Lots of other different reasons. Um, so, so what? This is something I always get asked at work. Someone will say, can you come up with an idea for this? And I'll say my idea and my boss will always say, so what? What's the point? Um, well, we've seen an example here of when we can extract objects from images. And this is using a search. Everyone must have heard of Google or Amazon or Microsoft, and there's a few others out there, they all have a tool called object detection. And they're all out there, they're available. We don't have to do the artificial intelligence ourselves. Um, we, they already have very strong models. Now, every one of you um, is either interested or is involved in some sort of programming. And I've zero doubt that every single one of you would be able to get this tool up and running um, with a little bit of time, a little bit of coaching and a little bit of bit, very simple just practice. Repetition is key. Now, what I've done is I have given all of your teachers access to um, my version of the code. I have given them access to uh, an, an online example um, of, of a quick access to that Google Vision tool the, the one that i've just been using is my prototype um but there is a website you can go to called cloud.google.com forward slash vision so there's also um you all might be using python or javascript uh, there's loads of different java there's a lot of different programming languages out there but your teachers also have um i've given them access to the libraries for those different languages to help you 
write code to interact and get this sort of information from taking pictures. And the idea here is that I only learned this through trial and error and constantly going over and over and over on my code. And you know, that's how we all learn. That's never going to disappear. In 10, 20 years time when you're on a job, you're going to be going through um, an iterative process, trial and error, trying it again, throwing the code away, starting again. But it's that same iterative process will, will never, ever stop. And artificial intelligence and learning, they will, it, they or it, I don't know what to refer to these things as now, um, they will be on a constant iterative process of learning and getting better and getting cleverer. So for you guys to have a go, um, there is a link there that I've given, which is um, cloud.google.com forward slash vision. If you go to that and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a thing that says try the API, drag image file here or browse from your computer. So you can take a picture, get it on your machine, drag and drop that picture in. You might get that little box that says prove you're not a robot. I'm sure you're all um, familiar with that. But what I'll be shown afterwards is a page something like this. It will start on objects, but with reference to the example I've just given, it's interested in that we're interested in the label section. Now that picture of me is uh, I, when I was first testing this, I was just taking random pictures of me. But from that picture there and the few bits of the example on the on the right side of the picture, it's 98 percent confident that it can see a Rubik's cube. It's 92 percent confident that it can see a shelf. Um, I don't know why it's not 99 percent or 100 percent confident that I can see a beard, but that definitely is a beard. Um, it's 87 percent confident. There's other things in there. Apparently it's 70 percent confident that I'm an elder. Um, which is a little bit disappointing. But this is a tool where you can quickly see the power of um, of the, the actual tool itself. Um, to give you a really odd example, I took a photograph of someone who I worked with, and when I dragged his picture on, it took me to his, it gave me the link to his LinkedIn profile, which is a, like a networking tool that um, professionals use. So it really is powerful. Another example of the absolute power of this is uh, I live in Tynemouth and I took a picture on Front Street of Tynemouth Priory and it identified that I was in Tynemouth, that that was Tynemouth Priory Castle and it even told me where it thought I was on a map and there's no human in between taking the photograph and getting that information. But still, so what? We've got this cool tool that we can take pictures, we can extract objects. You know, you've got the code, you've got access to a prototype, um, you've got access to all of these different things. <clears throat> but one of the key things with you guys through your learning progress is something called a use case. And what is a use case? Well, it's um, you might notice if you have a big pen, if you take the lid off a big pen, it's got a hole in it. Well, a long time ago, a clever man in um, the Tommy Tippy factory in Cromlington, people were kind of swallowing pen tops and it was decided to put, why do we put a hole in? Well, it creates an airway and you'll look at stuff and go, why is that thing there? And it's because a use case was come up with this. But we're talking about pictures. We're talking about why would we need to know what objects are in a picture? And that's where you, all the clever people watching this, this is where your imagination can run wild. So you might have, so you really what you're looking for is a reason for this to exist. And this is really a concept called innovation. So it, it might be a business case. You might find a reason why it might help a business save money or it might, you might help a business make money. So for example, um, you might have to have a human being who has to watch your schoolyard and make sure there are no dogs. Well, if you have a tool which can detect that a dog is in an area, well, that teacher no longer has to stand watching the yard. 
it might be that it might be an area that they don't want children to be in if they if if they have a camera that's constantly taking pictures and they can detect that a child has been found then it can trigger an alarm and the the ideas and the reasons and why's and what for's are really they're all live inside of your mind it might just be which is for my case that this is um a proof of concept because one of the the depth that I went to on this that you might all have heard of is facial recognition. Can I use my face to log into my computer? Can I um, use my face and detect how similar it is to another face? So I take a fake picture of me and I take a picture of my little boy. It knows we're not the same person, but it can detect similarities. But you guys have the capacity to really start thinking about your use case. It might just be for fun and it might just be that you think to yourself, God, if I can get this thing working. You've just proven yourself to yourself that you have the capacity and the ability to interact with artificial intelligence, which is you're not creating the artificial intelligence, you're, you're interacting with it, you're extracting information, you're looking at the real world around you and using that to draw out information to which you can make decisions. And that is the the just the tip of the iceberg on the power of, 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 of the story of pictures. So that's everything from me. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions from any of you. I just want to say thank you, Paul. That was absolutely great. I really enjoyed it. I think the students get a lot from it. Um, I was wondering initially if you'd be able to talk <clears throat> us through how kind of your role in Accenture and how you got to that position, kind of what was your educational journey to get to where you are now? Um, so educational journey. Well, I went to John Spence uh, and that was where it all started and followed the normal path of um, high school, um, I went to um, Newcastle University, uh, no, I didn't go to Newcastle University, that's a fib. I went to Newcastle College and I did a two year, um, a starter degree where you do the first two years in a college environment. Um, and it gives you kind of that opportunity to have a year out or two years out or three years out without kind of um, changing your traditional course, which is what I chose to do. And I did a final year top up at um, Northumbria University. And really it was, I've always been inquisitive I've always been, I never wrote any code at school, but I was good at maths. Um, and it was just really from having a go, um, getting involved, and really now at Accenture, um, how old am I now? I'm 40, I'm 40 something. Um, I'm kind of what they refer to as a polyglot, where that normally refers to the spoken language, but to me, um, polyglot is, I can write in multiple languages. And I don't, one of the key things that I always try and instill in anyone is don't pigeonhole yourself. You know, be be a jack of all trades, but try and be a master in one or, or, or two things. And my role at Accenture is, my job title is a custom application engineering specialist. And what that really means is a client will come to Accenture and they'll say, I want a thing and there's a team of people who go out and understand what the clients want and we have a team of people called business analysts and they talk to the business and they come up with a thing called uh, user stories and they go you know for example when there's someone clicks on that this chunk of information gets sent over there it makes a decision and does something with it and you know you might get a yes you can have it no you can't have it or you might get a letter you might not get a letter and all of these different things um we have a a, a thing at, at um newcastle called the innovation zone and it's anyone who has an idea you will be listened to um, you will be listened to and you might have to present. You might have to present it to a board of directors. You might have to present it to anyone, anyone. And sometimes they'll go, that's a great idea. Have some time and go and see if you can make it. Um, and 
one of the things that I'm fortunate is uh, I've had a few harebrained ideas uh, and they've given me the opportunity to go and investigate and build or have a play around with technologies. And I am guilty of sometimes making a thing and then trying to fit a story around it. Um, or someone will come up to me with a story and go, can you find technology that achieves that? For example, um, there's something I'm working on at the minute about, can I use a person's face and the things that they say without typing, literally recording what they say and looking at their face, can I make a decision about whether or not their application can be processed right now because artificial intelligence believes you or, or is what you're saying falling in line with everybody else that we've passed an application to receive money or, or uh, um, allow to go to the next stage? Um, and the answer is uh, yes, you can. Um, and really, it's always, I don't know if anyone's seen the series Ted Lasso about the football guy, the American football manager who comes and manages an English team. It's a very poignant bit in there for me. And he said, you must be curious. Um, and really, as time, sometimes your teachers will say things to you that you'll not understand. And then 10, 20 years later, you'll, rem I remember things that teachers have said to me and I went, you know, that actually makes sense now. Um, and it's really just from having a go, keeping at it. Things aren't going to work first time. You're going to get angry. When I was at university, I used to I used to have to keep a notepad and a pen by the side of my table and somewhere near the toilet because I would wait. I would be stuck and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd go, oh, my God, that's the answer. And I would write it down. And the next day I would wake up and, you know, and that stuff from that inquisitiveness. It's from that. I was I was told by a university lecturer to say, nurture the cloudiness that you have in your head about being stuck and thinking, oh, I'm baffled. Embrace it, be stuck, but keep typing, keep having a go. Um, and things get easier, but they also, you get deeper into the topic. Um, I hope that answers your question anyway. It does. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Paul. You're welcome. Really great advice. Um, does, does anybody else on the call have any questions for Paul? I can see. I think we might have linked in with another call. So I want to chat with Sarah. No, we've got we've got builders in. Ah, oh, um, we've Paul. got builders and a painter. And, very busy house um, yeah it's i'm just locked in the um the junk room at the minute oh, okay well if there is any more questions i just want to say thank you so much we'll very be welcome sharing that with all the schools in our network and i think they'll get a lot from it Fine. thank you so much thank you nice to meet you all take care bye take care bye